in studio tonight where we are asking the government and engaging private sector players as well on how young people can access government funding and if you cannot access government funding what do you do and how can you prepare your business in order it is clean enough to be funded uh, by the government and of course joining us in studio is a newly unveiled chair of the Uwezo Fund Wanjiru Gadiro thank you so much for joining us uh, Catherine Namuya from the Youth Development Fund and of course Winnie from uh, Frida from Passion Profit thank you so much uh, for joining us. Wanjiru, let's just start off with you because we're getting quite a number of questions um, on Twitter. The hashtag is at is hashtag biz center if you want to talk to us. Where can we access this fund? Um, at the constituency level through the uh, uh, Uwezo fund uh, constituency uh, committees. Um, the forms were already sent, the application forms were already sent to the uh, committees mm -hmm. and people can pick them up and, and fill them out. The forms will be vetted. Um, once once the, f the, the application forms are received by, by the committees, they will be vetted and um, uh, we hope that the money will be dispersed um, within this financial year. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. when do you, um, what does, how does one qualify sorry, for the Wesel Fund? Um, you you have to be a, a a women group, a youth group, or you know a group of persons with disabilities. Uh, you have to be registered. Um, uh, it's it's a very it's a very uh, uh, collapsed uh, requirements. Um, uh, and if people want more information on that, they can check on the on the Wezo website yes. where there's a lot more information about the, the actual specifics. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Catherine, we're also getting uh, quite some questions about the youth fund. Um, and of course, there's some saying we have never been able to access it. And perhaps you will tell them exactly how to go about it. Mm -hmm. First of all, where can they access the youth fund, both you know, at, um, here in Nairobi and outside the, outside the city as well? Well, uh, the fund has several uh, touch points across the country. We have 10 regional offices, but on top of that, we also have officers in each and every constituency. And uh, if at all you require any information, if you went to the former chief's offices and if you go to any district office, you will always find a desk officer for the youth fund and a constituency officer for the youth fund or the county youth directors who will also be in a position to give you the information. Now, the reason why some young people are not in a position to access the youth fund is because probably they've enrolled in a group that defaulted and they resubmitted the application. Definitely they will not qualify. Apart from that, some groups are also accepting young people who defaulted in other groups. And our system simply sieves out those individuals. And the minute we discover that is what is happening, whether you're coming in as a group or as an individual, mm -hmm. then definitely you will not be able to access the funding. Mm -hmm. So if, I, if I'm interested in funding my new business or, or I have a great idea, what are the things that I need as an individual to, to, be, uh, to be qualified for the youth fund? We have several products. As I mentioned earlier on, for us, we saw the need and the differences in the various young people, the various tiers of young people. So if you have to access as an individual, we are saying you can either access it as a business name in form of a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a limited company, which also means then you need to have documents that reflect that particular, you know, those particular requirements. Apart from that, you also need to be between the ages of 18 and before you attain the age of 35. According to our constitution, you hit 35, you cease being a youth, yes. and therefore you cannot benefit from the youth fund. However, we also recognize the importance of having um, young people nurtured in business. So we, are, we have what we call a 70 to 30 rule, which means 70% of the enterprise, whether in group form or uh, in a company form, has to be youth. Mm -hmm. 30% can be above the age bracket of, of the youth. However, 100% of the directorship has to be fully owned by the youth. That means then, what you, uh, okay, basically what you're saying is, in case money goes to the young people, fine, you have the participation of anyone above the age of 35, but 
the youth are the ones in control of the financing. Mm. Just a point of clarification, because we're seeing that a lot of the questions coming through, uh, young people asking, must I be in a group to access the funding? And you've just mentioned sole proprietorship. And perhaps, I don't know if it would, be, it would apply to the Wazo Fund as well. Maybe just a clarification. Must I be in a group to um, apply for the youth fund? Must I be in a group to apply for the Wazo Fund? To access funding from the, fu uh, from the youth fund, you can either be in a group an individual within a group or as an enterprise, you know, a registered name. Mm -hmm. So which means an individual within a group means we are fine. You are in a group setup for purposes of security because at the group level, we don't ask for security. We don't charge any interest, but we do charge a management fee of 5%. So what we are saying is within that group, you as Terian can actually apply and benefit as Terian as opposed to the group formed of Terian, Frida, and Wanjiro. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, perfect. Um, how about the Weso Fund? Have, uh, the, have, the, has, have the structures been drawn on who can access it? Yes, um, it's at two levels. One is at the institutional level. Uh, institutions that have youth groups can apply. And then there's, of course, the, 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 the groups. They have to access as groups. Mm -hmm. um, I think we haven't gotten to the point where it's still new, it's, yes. but for now it's groups it's and groups. or institutions that have um, mm. groups, groups in them. Frida, Frida, let me rope you into the conversation here. Um, because a lot of young people do not actually know how to put their books in order and therefore do not necessarily qualify to get funding. Maybe there's a sense of not taking business that seriously until the, the point where you say, I want money yesterday. So how do you tell these young people, what can they do to make sure that they are attractive to funding? One thing we tell them right from the start to make sure that you're registered properly. What is the appropriate legal corporation that you need to have? And then we also help them to understand that the money of the business is not their money. Oftentimes, young business people think, this is my money, I'm earning it, so I can use it any way I want. So we encourage them to open a separate bank account and to pay themselves a salary and to keep simple records. We have a class where they go through and they're taught we have a finance coach that helps them to know how to keep records. So at the point that uh, somebody wants to see the history of their data, there's something to show for it. Mm -hmm. So we help them right from the start so that they can start and grow right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how can somebody turn their passion into, into profit? Because in the way that we are socialized as young people, we're taught to go to work so that one day we will go to, I school. Mean, go to school so <laughs> that one day mm -hmm. you will be employed. But yeah. now we're seeing a turnaround and even in the government's commitment uh, to provide funding for businesses, it seems uh, you know, there's a shift in the way the government is thinking. Now they're encouraging young people yes. to start their businesses. Mm -hmm. Which is really good because a lot of young people, some even after the school and they can't find a job. And sometimes they go to school <coughs> simply because that is the grade uh, that took them to whatever course that they're gonna do. It's not necessarily what they want. So we find a lot of people who are coming to our classes because their parents wanted them to be a lawyer, but they'd rather do interior design and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. one thing we help them to realize, yes, it's your passion. You like doing this thing, but is there an opportunity? Is there a problem it's going to solve? Mm -hmm. And are there enough people mm -hmm. who are willing and able to pay for this thing that you like doing? Mm -hmm. So we really help them to align their passion with an opportunity in the society so that they'll be able to make money out of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. My director says we are getting a little bit too tight, so she wants us to be um, a little light. And I'll ask Wanjiro to pick an envelope uh, between number one and number nine. Oh, no. Four. Number four. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see what number four says. How much <laughs> money do you have in your pocket? Oh, no. Um, I don't have a pocket. <laughs> <laughs> How much money do you have in your handbag? In my handbag, um, I have 3,000 shillings. 2,000 shillings? 3,000 3, shillings. shillings. Just in case I need fuel or, you know, <laughs> airtime or <laughs> I need to send somebody in Pesa. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. just don't keep a lot. I don't walk with a lot. Of, I walk around with a lot of money. Okay. So mm. Any on Mpesa? I'll um, <laughs> no, in case somebody tells <laughs> me how to send the money and then I can genuinely say I don't, I don't have any MPs. Okay. <laughs> Wanjiru, I'll just um, <laughs> carry on from there now. Now, you have been an entrepreneur for some time now yeah. as well as, as, a, as a management consultant. What is your personal conviction about empowering young people in business? I, I believe in the young people. 
um, and 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 I believe that that um that the Kenyan education system sometimes get gets it twisted because I mean I was reading the paper today and uh, 400 and over 400,000 I think 464 uh, students sat for the K K S K C S E and uh, of that amount. 31%, uh, which is like 141,000, got D and E's. Now, obviously, they'll not be able to join university or a professional course that, you know, they're locked out of a professional course. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they're not useful, you know. They, they can be self-employed. And, and I don't think employment is, 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 um, is, is a hard sell because, you know, can you imagine how many processes, systems, people it took to generate just a bottle of water? Um, that's a need. It doesn't have to be a complicated process. So you can empower youth on different levels, on life skills, on how to do business, um, on the en enabling environment, like, you know, how do you, how do you get a business? You know, it's, it's, it's connecting the dots for youth that matters. Mm -hmm. Youth doesn't, I, and, and, you know, enterprise doesn't have to be so complicated that, you know, you have to go to school for it and get an MBA, no. Um, I agree with what Frida is saying. There's a need, and you know, all Kenyans, are closet entrepreneurs. All Kenyans have a side yeah. hustle. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing something. Yes. But, but it's juakali. It's time we professionalized what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we put a framework onto it. We have a business plan. That's what I would like to see happen for young people because they come to me and they say, okay, yeah, I have a passion. I'm like, stick with it. Stay with it and see where the gaps are. But it doesn't have to be complicated. Somebody will buy what you're selling. That's just the way of the, of the universe. Catherine, yeah. what are some of the biggest mistakes a youth make when they're trying to apply for the youth fund? And this is, as you answer that, I'll go and pick an envelope. So you can tell me what number you want <laughs> um, as, as you think about um, the mistakes. I'll go with eight. Number eight. Okay, you can tell us about some of the biggest mistakes that, um, you know, the youth make when they're applying for the youth fund. The biggest, biggest mistake is when uh, a young person comes in with the mentality of loan and money as opposed to coming in with the idea and seeing you know actually visualizing if possible and even sketching what the plan is going to be to make sure that this business is actualized and it actually and it grows that is the biggest mistake and why i say it's the biggest mistake we face is that you come in with the mentality of the loan which means when we you get to our offices and we tell you not even mentality of loan it's actually the mentality of the money of, of free money yes that i'm going to get because at the end of the day this is government money so you come to our offices and we tell you you know what okay this is the uh, these are the brochures of the various products and with this you can decide where exactly your business fits. Mm -hmm. After that, we tell you, okay, fine, you've decided this is what you want to do. We give you an application form. You need to go and fill. You need to go and have the chief witness because we are financing the business within the constituency where you are. Not that you live in Starehe, uh, um, okay, you're starting the business in Starehe and you go and apply for a loan in Embakasi because it's the Starehe officer who's going to follow up your loan. Now, when we bring up such issues, the young persons then think, um, you know what, the process is too cumbersome because since I came in with the idea of free money, I'm expecting that I'll come over the counter and I'll be told, okay, what's your name? My name is Catherine. What's your ID number? I give my ID number. It's written down. Uh, what date is it today? I'm signing off, please. How much do you want? You say you want 50,000. We indicate 50,000 and we tell you sign and we give you the money. It does not work like that. So those are some of the mistakes which make it very difficult for most young people to accept that you can actually get a loan and finance an idea. So mm -hmm. come up with the idea, know what the needs of the idea are, and how much you'll require, then now come for the money. Okay. Now, Catherine, they say everybody has a weakness. Mm -hmm. What is your shopping weakness? What's the one thing you always buy when it's not on your shopping list? Oh, my goodness. Shoes and handbags. <laughs> and that's why, like, Wanjiro, <laughs> I don't carry a lot in my wallet, yes. because if I see a nice pair of shoes or a nice handbag, then I'll go for it. Mm -hmm. That's my weakness. All right, Frida, let's uh, <laughs> come <laughs> quickly to you. Um, your word of advice to young people who have nothing 
are feeling like they're nowhere, but they think that their only hope is starting a business? Number one, they have something mm. between their two ears. Yeah. <laughs> and it's called a brain. <laughs> <laughs> they have a mind. So it's to sit down and be observant. Look around and see what are some of the needs that we have and where can they start. Uh, to look around and see if, let's say, you want to be a caterer, but you say, oh, I don't have anything to start, you know, being a caterer with. Is there another caterer that you can go and volunteer for mm -hmm. so that you can learn the rope, so that you can be in that environment? Um, they don't always have to start perfect. Mm -hmm. I think they, they, they seem to have this idea that I'm going to be an event planner and I need X amount from whichever fund and then I'll start. Mm -hmm. Before that, I'm not starting. But all we need is an idea that matches an opportunity and our willingness to take action. All right. mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. What action can I start taking now? What do I have? And I believe as much as we ask our mind, what do I have? What do I have? Where can I start? Then it begins to become clear. And then volunteering is not a, is not a bad idea. I find that uh, young people want to be paid for everything. Mm. They want to be paid. And yes, there will be a time that you'll be paid for everything. But there's also a time that sometimes you have to sow a seed. Mm -hmm. You have to help somebody else that's already established. Mm -hmm. As you learn, mm -hmm. you know, as you acquire skills, as you network. And you never know what could happen for you in that space. Okay. We will need to quickly take a commercial break. But you need to pick an envelope very quickly. Okay, number three. Number three. So help me God. <laughs> <laughs> so help you God. Number three, which is your favorite holiday destination? Ooh. Wow. That's a good one. Um, mm, mm, mm. I'll say somewhere I haven't been, Hawaii. Hawaii. I long to go there. All right. <laughs> yes. Now we are taking a very short break. We'll be back with more from the business center in just a moment. And as we say here, don't go too far. Now we are talking about uh, youth access to government funding and if you cannot access government funding, what options do you have? Now final questions to our panelists tonight. Uh, let's start off with Wanjiru Gadira because a lot of the people talking to us on our social media platforms on Twitter, hashtag at the B Center, um, are asking, you know, is there any capacity building that's being offered to young people when they, uh, because half of these people do not actually, you know, are not trained to run businesses. Uh, yes, I forgot to mention it when you asked what the, the criteria for, for application was. But for all those um, groups that make it, that, 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 that are able to, um, that are vetted and, and, um, and, and get the application, will be trained in capacity building uh, for a three month period. Actually, the way it's supposed to work is you're trained for three months prior to accessing the loan so that you're, you're fully aware of what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, and, and thereafter, the capacity building service provider works with you for a year okay. so that you're able to sustain your business. All right, Catherine, let's come to you very quickly. Collateral, also a great issue on our social media platforms mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. How can you ask young people for collateral when they really don't have any collateral? Um, Terry, it depends on what product the young person is uh, applying for. And what we're also saying is the higher the amount, the more the risk we're exposing taxpayers' money to. So if we're asking for collateral, it means you're applying for a premium product. Remember, all our constituency youth products do not attract any interest rate. They do not attract any collateral because we're using the group guarantee model. However, if you're coming to us as an individual, what is the assurance that you are going to repay the money? Again, for individuals, you're saying you're benefiting from one mil uh, 100,000 to 2 million, a large amount. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Frida, what's the one most important thing that a young person must embrace if they want to be in business? I would go with patience. They need to be patient. It takes a business 18 to 36 months to be profitable. Mm -hmm. Many people want to make money quickly. And within three months, they're like, this is not working. They want to jump on to the next thing. So be patient. Persevere in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us tonight. Uh, interesting discussions. The young people have benefited so much from listening to you. And of course, um, especially from a government uh, side, there's a lot of complaints of people not being able to get their funds. So it would be really nice if, if they can um, access those funds and quickly. Yeah.
Well, it's time now for Leading Ladies, and tonight we feature Chibi.